And the ones that have really done the work after will tell you, thank God I did it. Thank God I got out. I know people that were stuck for a long time, afraid of getting out. And when they finally did, and they turned the corner, and things got really good, it was like, thank you. I'm finally free. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another segment of the Psychopath Exposure Show. My name is Kita. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. If this is your first time in the channel, I haven't mentioned this in a while, but um, you can download a free ebook I wrote that's going to help you guys establish boundaries, um, go no contact with your psychopath, narcissist, ex. I have a download link in the description of this video. It's absolutely free, and it's going to show you in detail what you must do if you're serious about cutting all communications with your abusive, toxic, narcissistic ex. Otherwise, this thing is just going to keep going on forever and ever. That cycle that you're stuck in, you're never going to escape. You have to cut all communications with this person, uh, especially if you don't have kids or you're not locked in to a marriage or anything like that right now. If you're actually free, then there's no reason why you should have any lines of communication open or available for the narcissist, the psychopath, the borderline even, to randomly reach out and suck you back in to the chaos. All right, so check the link below in the description and download that straight to your phone or your computer. Um, it'll be very, very helpful. Anyway, speaking of marriage, I want to read a comment from somebody that's married to a covert narcissist for over 20 years. Um, this one comes in from Fast Rivers 812. And they go, imagine being married to a covert narcissist for 23 years. I was motivated, ambitious, had a sense of humor, but lost all of that. Started dating her in college. Had no idea what narcissism was. But looking back and learning about this has answered so many questions I've had. I don't know who I am anymore. My goals are shot. We're still married and I have kids. And I don't know what to do. Well, <laughs> deep down, my friend, what do you want to do? Deep down, deep down in your gut, what is your gut screaming at you to do? That's the voice that you got to listen to. That's the one you got to listen to. It's not even a voice, it's an intuition that probably has been screaming at you for years. That you're in a very, very toxic, abusive, miserable marriage with somebody that up until recently apparently had a disorder, has a disorder, <laughs> that you knew nothing about. And now you're starting to get your answers. You've been questioning this for a long time. You know, when you say that you had a sense of humor and you lost it, it reminds me of a good friend of mine who was married to a narcissist for a long time. This was way before I experienced um, my entanglement with a psychopath. I had no idea what none of this was. And I remember how... This is a guy that used to be funny. I mean, we used to get n nearly kicked out of class in college because we couldn't stop laughing. This guy was hilarious. And many years later, he was married. I was like, dude, what's going on? Like, your timing is off. The punchlines were bad. I used to tell my girlfriend at the time, I was like, this guy, this guy used to be funny. In fact, I bigged him up so much that when, when, when I introduced him for the first time, she was like, didn't you say this guy was funny? I go, yes, drop that funny. I don't know what the hell, I don't know who this guy is. It happens to everybody. Your spirit gets sucked away. You don't know who you are at the end. And when I say the end, you know, it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be the end when you finally divorce or separate. 
The end for you, my friend, has been a long time ago. Like you said, you used to be motivated and ambitious, right? Where is all that now? Same thing happened to me and I wasn't even married. Same thing happened to me. I was on the top of my game. I had so much motivation that when my alarm clock would ring on my phone, before it, before it went through the, you know how it has a pattern and then it repeats, before it would go into its first loop, I, was already, I had already sprung out of bed with excitement, ready to conquer the day. Nice and early too. Nice and early too. Super excited. Always had something to do. Always had something to look forward to. So much motivation. And then I got with who I thought was the person I manifested. Who I thought was the perfect girl for me. My soulmate. Oh boy. It didn't take long before I lost all of that. Bringing out of bed? No. How about how about panicking in bed and not, not able to get out of bed? How, how about that? That's what happened at the end. That's what happened. And after, once that was over and she was gone, oh boy, I didn't know who I was either. My goals completely shot too. And I used to have, I still have, a whiteboard with all these goals and dates, deadlines, and all this shit, everything broken down. And I remember looking at that, and I was like, I'm, ne I'm never gonna get this done. I didn't even care anymore. Literally, I had a hole in my soul. Not, you know how people say they have a hole in their heart? It wasn't a hole in my heart. It was a hole in my soul, if you can even fathom that. You know, how can you put a hole in spirit, right? But that's what it felt like. And I was just, I was just left there, just no will to live. I would think of things that I used to love and I didn't even want to entertain the thought much longer. I had no interest. It was this, it felt like the Grim Reaper had touched me and all I felt was death. Everything around me was dead to me. It was a, a really dark time. It was really heavy sense of nihilism. So I get it, man. I get it. You know, you started dating in college. I'm sure those days were awesome. But you got to live, live with somebody for you to see what they're really made of. This is why a lot of um, high-tier narcissists they're able to accomplish a lot of things and fool the world. They put on a mask. They play the game, the masquerade. They can, they can charm everybody. But behind closed doors at home, that's, what, that's where, where you see the monster. That's where the monster comes out. And nobody believes you because they're just looking at the exterior. How could this person... You're going to say this person is a monster. This guy's loved by everybody in the town. As a matter of fact, they say that you're abusive. And they say that you're crazy and controlling and yada, yada, yada. It's like, wow, they've already smeared your name all over town. Amazing how they're able to do stuff like that. Yeah, so you're left a vegetable. You don't know who you are anymore. And now you're in a situation where you feel stuck, don't you? And you don't know what to do. Well, brother, let me tell you. If you stay in this situation, another 23 years is going to go by. Think about that for a moment. Another 23 years going by. Do you think that things are going to get any better? Do you think they're going to feel the way they felt when you were in college after all this shit? I know it's hard to get out of a marriage, especially when you have kids. This is why a lot of people stay in dysfunctional uh, relationships because of the hassle of having to do it. I have some friends right now that are in the process of getting a divorce. They both know they're unhappy. 
Uh, both know that there's cheating going on. It's, it's a matter of time until they figure out how they're going to do it. And it's just eating this person alive, just n the impending doom that's coming. And then when they start, you know, when they tell me, like, what's really been going on, and I'm like, oh, boy, that sounds so familiar. You know, and at this point, I I'm, I'm trying not to just throw the narcissist um, uh, accusation. You know, at the beginning, it's like, oh, you must be with a narcissist. That's a narcissist. But now it's like, you know what? Let me just hear them out. They're already getting a divorce. If they want more information, if they really want to dive deep, then we can talk. But, you know, some people are afraid to share what's really going on because they're, they're embarrassed. No one wants to admit that their wife is cheating on them and that they know about it and they're, you know, afraid to do something about it and that they've known for years. It's, it's embarrassing. And, it's, you know, vice versa, same thing. It's embarrassing. I get it. But I can tell you, man, if you stay in your situation, if you stay in this marriage, it's going to eat you alive. Because it sounds like it already has. If you want a chance at happiness, joy, freedom, abundance, and all the things in the world that are there waiting for you, you got to get out of this toxic relationship. You know this. You know this. I'm sure somebody at some point has told you that it's time to end that. But that's the only way. It's not going to happen while you're there. Do you see that? I hope you see that. I hope you guys watching these videos, I hope you're not delusional enough to think that, hey, maybe we can make this work when everybody here tells you the same thing. You got to get out. So the first thing you got to do, man, you got to start planning an exit strategy. You may want to talk to an attorney to get more information about how the process works if you haven't done so already. Just so you know what it's going to cost, how, how it works, what's the procedure, if the, do you have to abandon the house, what do you got to do? Like, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, an attorney. Talk to the attorney. Figure it out. Talk to multiple attorneys and get, get a second opinion, right? Because you got kids. I don't know how old your kids are, but there's going to have to be some sort of custody plan. Or maybe they're over 18 and they can do what they want. I, I, I don't know your situation, but a lot of people here go through the same thing. And the ones that actually survive narcissistic abuse, the ones that survive, they'll tell you life is so much better without them. And the ones that have really done the work after will tell you, thank God I did it. Thank God I got out. I know people that were stuck for a long time, afraid of getting out. And when they finally did, and they turned the corner, and things got really good, it was like, thank you. I'm finally free. I never thought I would feel this way. But I feel even better than I could possibly even dream that I could feel. Because when you're in it, all you feel is death. So your brain is not strong enough to conjure up thoughts or emotions of happiness and joy. It only produces thoughts of death and loneliness and isolation and depression, nihilism. When you get out, you start to taste the sweet honey. And you're like, damn it, I should have done this earlier. Because the time is going to keep passing by anyway. Don't let time pass you by. So, thanks for sending that in, man. Good luck to you. Um, if you want to follow up with us as you progress through this long, hard road out of hell, I welcome you to leave some more comments and follow up. Just um, reply to the same comment so it, it keeps the history of it. And let us know what you're doing and, and, and how that situation is going and, and keep, us, keep us updated. Because I can assure you, when all, when all this is done, you're going to be in a much better situation. That's for sure. All right? If you need help, if you want to work together on this situation, you want to work directly with me on my private coaching program, I do have a link below in the description as well where you can get more information on that. This goes for everybody, of course. Um, so do not hesitate to reach out for more details. I would love to help get you out of this entanglement as best as I can. 
All right, guys, hope you're having an amazing day. I'll see you in the next video. This is Kira with Psychopath Exposure, signing off. Peace out. Thank you.